Hi all, let's do another in a five minute nutshell game. So Boris Gelfand was playing against Nitzan Steinberg. This is in Tradewise Gibraltar round six. D4, we have the Slav defense, knight f3, knight f6, and now g3. Quite often, black takes this pawn, so it's a sort of positional gambit. Bishop g2, e6, but knight e5, white is resting immediately to get it back. b5, you might think this is quite scary, but uh, it's not too harmful for black knight c6 because knight takes c6, queen c7. Yeah, and uh, it's it's been it's been played before. So b5, a4 was played here, ignoring the c6 pawn. Knight d5, shielding c6. Castles, bishop b7. And usually e4 is played here. But in this game, slightly rarer idea. b3, just undermine the pawn chain. Takes, take on b5, taking on b3. So it's a kind of gambit here going on e4 knight f6 and now the very aggressive d5 while the black king is still in the center bishop c5 black is trying to use those dark squares now knight c4 very interesting we're using this pin and the knight's heading for a5 potentially unpinning the knight goes to a5 anyway black castles bishop b2 Queen b6, does white have enough compensation? The rook is also tied down to f2 here. Knight d2 is played. Rook a7. Queen c2. E takes. E takes. Rook c7, threatening. Bishop takes f2, winning the queen. We have knight db3, so the queen can take on f2 now. Bishop b4 hitting the queen. The queen moves. Queen d6. Rook a c1. Rook takes, rook takes, rook e8. Now we have the move h3 taking away the g4 square from black. Now knight c6. Interesting invasion on c6, threatening the bishop potentially. And also, yeah, the knight. Knight takes c6, rook takes c6. Black is inflected with doubled pawns here. Bishop takes f6. And now, d6, is this pawn really dangerous? Bishop b7. We have rook c1 being played in this position. Which actually means, yeah, this, this bishop is attacking this one. That's uncovered the threat now of bishop takes b7. If bishop takes g2, probably black was afraid of d7, but maybe this is the best line for black just to sack the exchange to get rid of the dangerous pawn. Apparently, this position, if we take this a bit further, is technically okay for black. This might have been one of black's best tries. But he played, actually, here queen a8. And now we have a big problem. After bishop takes, queen d4 hitting the bishop. That's protected. But d7, this is actually a really strong pawn for a subtle reason. After rook d8, can you see what white plays, which is really crushing? If I give you five seconds starting from now. So accelerate the, the white pawn. How would you do that? Okay, rook c8, believe it or not. Although it seems to be protected, black resigned here. If he takes, can you see what white plays? What a neat tactic. Okay, the check, yeah. It, adds oomph here yeah, for d takes like later and actually there's no there's no real defense after rook c8 um you know if bishop e7 then that neglects a5 weakness of the last move bang we just tap into that weakness of the last move and yeah the queen can't take here because the rook's pinned right we just take that so well what would happen here it's it's end of game knight c6 is happening uh, let's just show that yeah knight c6 so black uh, yeah he's busted after rook c8 he resigned ok I hope you enjoyed this one got something out of it comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much